We ask you and we thank you for allowing all of those who came out tonight to be here and also those who couldn't be here tonight. Lord, pray over everyone. Pray over the city. Pray over the people of the church. No, just pray over the people of the church. Pray over everyone because everyone needs forgiveness and everyone needs a bit of prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Our theme tonight is our pastor, a servant with an unwavering faith. The scripture is coming from Psalms chapter 89, verse 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known your faithfulness to all generations. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Your faithfulness shall you shall establish in the very heavens. Amen. 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 And now our welcome by our Brother Corey. Good evening again, everybody. So glad to see a bunch of new faces, very familiar faces. But now is the time, if you have anything you would like to say, now is your time. If not, we welcome you to the church tonight, and we'll be glad when you come again. Amen. 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 And now we'll have a response. Uh, by Faithful Missionary Baptist Church. Sonia Wilson. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that warm welcome. Um, and we are so glad to be here to celebrate your pastor's 15th anniversary with you. Um, so we accept that welcome in the spirit in which it was given. Thank you. Amen. 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 We're going to have a song selection by New Mount Carmel Youth and uh, the New Mount Carmel Praise Team. Amen. 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 So praise team and the youth, come on up. Come on, let's encourage them today. Come on. <laughs>
our sister Arlene, and after that, we'll have a couple selections by Faithful Baptist Church. Amen? Amen. Good evening, church. Good evening. How's everyone night going? Good. Good. Okay, that's good. Yeah. All right, so Pastor Brian K. Harris was born and raised here in the city of Trenton. He attended the public school system through junior high and finished high school at Notre Dame High School in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. In December of 1999, he was called by divine appointment to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in obedience to this call, gave his initial sermon in June of 2000. Pastor Harris was ordained three years later, June 2003, under the leadership of his pastor, Reverend Nathaniel Benjamin Jr. at the Wayne Avenue Baptist Church and in conjunction with the, Middle, with the Middlesex Central Baptist Association. He went on to further study at the Philadelphia Biblical University, where he graduated in May of 2006 with a Bachelor of Science degree in Bible, with emphasis in Christian leadership. In December of 2009, Pastor Harris was inspired by God to plant the Faithful Missionary Baptist Church, where he has been pastoring ever since, and over three years ago led the march into their new home on Prospect Street, Trenton. The Lord is blessing and adding to faithful, both spiritually and numerically. He is a proud father of two beautiful daughters, Bria and Zanira Harris, both whom have been pillars of the choir of the church since its humbling, humbling, humble beginnings. Amen. 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 Now we have a musical selection from Faithful Missionary Church, and then we'll here will be uh, Pastor Brian Harris. We sing the praises to our Lord, for He is our King of Kings. We sing the praises to our Lord, for He is the King of Kings. We sing the praises to our Lord, for He is our King of Kings. We sing the praises to our Lord, for He is the King of Kings.
Thank you for an early rising this morning. Thank you for the activity of our limbs. Thank you for a reasonable portion of health and strength. And now, Lord, we come thanking you for your manservant that you have placed here in this portion of the vineyard. We come in celebratory fashion. We come thanking you for 15 long years. Thank you, Lord God, for every sermon preached, every prayer uttered, every song sang. We thank you in this house. Thank you for his help me, O God, who stands alongside him, who stands with him, O God. We thank you for their union. We thank you, O God, for how you're carrying this ministry forward in your name. Now, Lord, we thank you for every member that has come through the doors soul that has been saved through his preaching yes, now Lord God we ask that you would just allow faithful to stop by in fellowship tonight to share a word of encouragement to your manservant in order that he might be encouraged on in order that might he in order that he might feel inspired oh God to run on a little while longer yes, yes. And now, Lord, I, 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 I ask that you would be with me, O oh God. Be with me in all of my shortcomings and all of my faults and all of my failures. Stand up in your servant tonight. I decrease in order that you might increase. Get the glory, O oh God, with whatever it is that you deem fit to share on tonight. I ask that you would allow me to share for the next few moments with simplicity and also with clarity so that all in this place will understand and that somebody might be moved to where they'll come running to the front of this room sharing in the words of brother peter saying that i believe that thou art the christ the son of the living god and then lord when life's march shall be over when we've done all that we can do and cannot do anymore receive us into your kingdom somewhere over there where job said that the wicked cease from troubling and the weary are finally one day at rest this is our prayer and we ask it in Jesus name in Jesus name amen and amen we greet you this evening in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we come thanking him for this wonderful opportunity to come and share in fellowship with you as you celebrate your pastor and first lady. Amen, Pastor Harris, we come to say congratulations. We come tonight to, to be a blessing and to help inspire you and to encourage you. And I have sense enough to know that you could have gotten any preacher amen your choice of preachers to be here on tonight amen so i am indeed humble amen that it has fallen my lot to share a word here on such a grand occasion we are just thankful amen for all of you amen i'm thankful for faithful amen and coming out amen as i requested amen we Thank you all, amen, for being here tonight. We thank God for New Mount Carmel, amen, for supporting your pastor on tonight, amen. And to the servants of praise, amen, my choir, amen. I thank God amen. for you on tonight. Amen. amen. To these wonderful and talented musicians, amen. Thank God for you, amen. And I'm just encouraged by the young people who serve on program on tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You all are doing a beautiful and a great work here at this church. Amen. It encourages my heart to, to see young people serving. Amen. On the inside of the church and not on the outside of the church. Amen. 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 Let's give our young people another hand. Amen. Amen. Not 
not going to hold you long, amen. We thank God for my dear brother who serves, amen, as our worship leader on tonight. We thank God, we honor you, amen, and salute you for the great work that you are doing as well. Not going to hold you long if you all would just share with me on tonight. I want us to turn to the prophetic book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the 25th chapter, and we want to come together at the very first verse. In the interest of clarity, amen, I'm going to be reading from the New International Translation, amen, but if you have a Bible, amen, it'll say the same thing. Jeremiah 25, beginning at verse 1, when you have it, you'll find these words. The word came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, which was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. So Jeremiah the prophet said to all the people of Judah and to all those living in Jerusalem, For twenty-three years from the thirteenth year of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah, until this very day, the word of the Lord has come to me, and I have spoken to you again and again, but you have not listened. From the thirteenth year of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah, until this very day, the word of the Lord has come to me, and I have preached to you again and again. But you have not listened. It's with these few verses that we want to talk just for the next ten or twelve minutes as the Spirit leads, I want to talk to you this evening from the subject matter the preacher keeps preaching, but is anybody listening? All right. Come on. And if we were to take a sub-topic on tonight, it would be a man when preaching ain't enough. All right. mm -hmm. The preacher is preaching, but is anybody listening? Talk about it. Right. The words tonight from the prophetic book of Jeremiah became known as the weeping prophet. Jeremiah becomes known as the weeping prophet because of all of what he has seen and all of what has troubled his heart. But he has seen how the people have lived and he lived to see God's judgment and Every now and then, Jeremiah found himself weeping. And I don't care who you are, amen. I know we celebrate 15 years, but I have sense enough on tonight to know that Pastor Harris has seen some stuff over 15 years. He felt some pain over the 15 years. He, he's experienced some things that have utterly brought him to tears. Jeremiah is known as the weeping preacher. He finds himself on tonight and he places us right in the midst of the text with what he shares to put us there in the moment. But is here in the text he gives us enough so that we can feel what he feels and experience what he is experiencing for he tells us in chapter 25 that the word came to him. The word comes to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. That was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar. He says, Jeremiah the prophet spoke unto all these people and he tells them that for 23 long years, I've been preaching to you all. 
23 years, he lets us know where it all began. And he lets us know that he ministered under King Josiah. All right. Josiah, we must understand, was a good and godly king. Uh -huh. Josiah was one who did all he knew to do to try and set the right example. All right. Josiah was one who loved God and did all of what he could to try to get the people to turn back to God. If you go over and you check out 2 Kings around the 23rd chapter, you will be able to read his story and how he tore down all of the idol gods and tried to get the people back to worshiping the one and only true and living God. Are you all going to pray with me tonight? He tried to steer the people back to God when they had strayed away. Not only did he endeavor to steer them back, but Josiah also led by example. All right. All right. Under his administration, there were no scandals. Mm -hmm. Under his administration, he tried to live the life in private as well as in public. Uh -huh. Josiah was one who, when you saw him, you could tell that he knew God. He was one who, under his administration, tried to do the right thing and simply tried to lead by example. All right. All right. But then he also informs us that after serving under Josiah, when Josiah dies, he, 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 he lets us know that Jehoiakim, is now king. Mm -hmm. Understand that Jehoiakim, his story is in 2 Kings around the 24th chapter. All right. It will tell you that he was nothing like his daddy. All right. He was nothing like the past or the prior administration. Uh -huh. But under his administration, anything went. He was one who did not care about trying to live right in private nor in public. He was one who did not care about leading the people the right way. He was one who did not care about setting a good and godly example. Thus, simply by the few words that Jeremiah shares in the text, he he juxtaposes, if you will, here tonight, the one administration, comparatively speaking, to the next administration. And he suggests to you and to me on tonight that it really does not take long, amen, to, to move from one place to a much worse place. Doesn't take long to have a leader who tries to do things right and you hear of no scandals and, and all of a sudden when that administration is gone. It doesn't take long for somebody else to sit in the Oval Office. Excuse me here if you will. Before they try to tear down everything that the prior administration has endeavored to set up. Doesn't matter to them. All they know is that they're there for their own grandizement. They're there for their own searching out. Their, their own, they are in service only to themselves. He tells us, he gives us insight to this by simply telling us that he, he served and preached under a good administration. All right. And you see, Jeremiah would probably take the witness stand and say tonight, Pastor Harris, that it was so much easier being a preacher. Uh -huh under Josiah uh, right. that it is being a preacher pastor under Jehoiakim. Ahead, right. You see, because when leadership ain't even trying to do right, it, it, it goes and weaves itself into the moral fabric of society. Ahead, when that fabric is tattered and torn and interwoven with that which is not right, it becomes so much more difficult to be a preacher in these times. Somebody need to help me in this place. It's hard to be a preacher under this administration. It, 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 it is hard, it is 
challenging when what while so much is being spewed from the higher ups and the those in charge and in place in our government it's hard when they are trying to turn everything upside down and inside out it's hard to be a preacher during these times yes it is that jeremiah the weeping prophet he he lets us in and he gives us some insight and he, and he tells us concerning all these people in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. He also lets us know that there, this was the very first year of Nebuchadnezzar. And that's an interesting point because when I read the text, he's signaling something to us. He's letting us know that when the moral fabric of society and sin runs rampant, God is setting things up to judge the people. But if you go on and read further, you Bible scholars understand that God uses Nebuchadnezzar to bring judgment upon the people. That's why tonight we're talking about not only is anybody listening, but when preaching ain't enough. All right, all right. All right preach, preach. Jeremiah had them preached a long time, but it was going to take more than preaching. It was going to take Nebuchadnezzar. It was going to take a storm in the people's lives to bring them to a place where they were ready to not just hear, but listen to what thus saith the Lord. And I don't know if there's anybody here tonight, but, but maybe you've been hard of hearing or just not listening. All right, all right. Maybe preaching has not been enough for you. Maybe it's going to take a storm in your life. Maybe it's going to take sickness in your life. Maybe it's going to take you losing your job. Maybe it's going to take you losing a loved one. Just maybe. Yes. Maybe yes. preaching ain't enough. Oh, Lord, God's got a storm that he can send your way that will cause you to be attentive to what thus saith the Lord. Yes. Yes. Somebody need to help me in this place. Oh, yes, God has something that he can send your way in order that you might see what he's been trying to get you to see over all of these 15 years. God knows how to let some stuff loose in your life. He knows how to use your enemy to bring you to a place where you'll cry out to God. He knows how to send the storms of life and don't blame everything on the devil all the time. Sometimes God is responsible for sending a storm your way. Some folk only in the church tonight because God sent a storm your way. Some folk are only here tonight because when you were on your sick bed and you wasn't doing right, you, you called the preacher and he came and prayed the, the prayer of faith and God put you back on your feet. That was your storm. It caused you to come running saying, I yield. I yield. That was your storm. Cause you to cry out, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, where, oh where, will I go? Yes, it is. God knows how to send a storm our way when preaching ain't enough. Here it is, Jeremiah tells us. From the 13th year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, even until this day, that is three and twentieth year, the word of the Lord has come unto me, and I have preached unto you time after time. But you have not been listening. He says that he's pastoring this church, Pastor Harris, and he's been preaching all of these many years, some 23 years now, and, and he's at a place where he simply sums it up by saying, I've been preaching, but y'all ain't been 
listening. The question then must be raised, what have they been doing all of these 23 years? He's been preaching, so that suggests to you and to me that he's had a congregation. Question is raised, what have they been doing all of these 23 years? And I endeavor to say that they've just been indulging Jeremiah. Uh -huh. They've just been coming Sunday after Sunday, sitting in the pews, feeling as though they're doing Jeremiah a favor. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. And I stop by on my way to glory tonight to let you know I don't need those kind of favors. Harris don't need you coming in here on Sunday morning just feeling as though you're doing him a favor. Some of y'all look like you got angry, amen. I, 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 I'll give you a way out. Just, 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 just imagine I'm, I'm preaching in the third person. We got two Harrises here tonight. Harris does not want y'all coming to church feeling as though you're doing him a favor. But this experience, experience is about transformation. When you come through the doors of the church, you ought to be coming in order that things might change in your life. This is not just some ordinary get together. You come through the doors of the church, it ought to be so that you you want God to work on you and to work in you and to change you. Change your mind to change your thought process. Don't think that you're doing Harris a favor just by showing up on Sunday morning. This thing is about transformation. This thing is about changing people's lives. This thing is about turning your life around. Don't come here on Sunday morning acting as though you're doing the pastor, the preacher a favor. Amen. It ought to be so that you come in here with a mind stayed on Jesus. Asking him that he would break you and make you and mold you. It, it ought to be so that you feel like the old folks sing when they used to sing the song you won't leave here like you came. Power of the Lord is still the same. So you won't leave here like you came. There, there ought to be something that causes you to leave out a different way from the way that you came in. Somebody ought to help me preach this thing this evening. Sing the song you won't leave here like you came. If you, if you come here without the mindset that you're doing the preacher a favor, then maybe, just maybe, yeah. yokes will be broken. Yeah. Chains will begin to fall off. You don't have to leave here the same way that you came in. Just maybe. You came here with a sincere heart for God and to hear what thus saith the Lord. Jeremiah experiencing a tough time. He says that I've been preaching 23 long years, but but y'all ain't listening. Come on. Been preaching Sunday after Sunday. God has constantly given me a word. I've been preaching. But you all have not been listening. Maybe they felt. The question is raised, what were they doing all these 23 years? Maybe they felt like they were doing Jeremiah a favor. Second thought, maybe they felt like they were doing God a favor. Some of us, over these 15 years, we have not drawn any closer to God because we use the two-hour worship on Sunday morning. 
to check off a box. To feel as though we've given God something. Mm -hmm. The problem Jeremiah had is that they would come to church, but when they went back out in the world, nobody ever knew that they even had been to church. Jeremiah. Problem is, the question that is raised, what were they doing all those 23 long years that he was preaching? Maybe they thought they were doing God a favor. You checked off your box and now you feel like you can go back out and keep doing the same things that you were doing and living any kind of way that you want to live and running the streets the way you want to live and living the lifestyle that, that you want to live. Talk to me, somebody in this place. Maybe you feel like you were doing God a favor. Don't do, again, the third person, Harris, <laughs> any famous. Because God does not need you to come in in that condition. The Bible tells us God is worth looking for serious worshipers. They're looking for somebody who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Yes, Dr. Harris, I'd rather I want you to know that faithful can hold about 120 folk if we all jam in there together. All right. But I want you to know I, 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 I'd rather have 12 serious worshipers and have the church full of 120 folk that when they leave outside, they're, they're living for the devil all over again. Give me 12. Take up the front couple pews if I know that they're trying to do this thing the right way. God is looking for somebody that will worship him in spirit and in truth. You see the 120 who just show up to act as though they're doing God a favor. You can't count on them. But give me 12 real worshipers. Because when the going gets rough, the 120 ain't coming to church. But give me the 12 because they will know how to worship in spirit and in truth. That simply means when the storm is raging, they still going to show up on Sunday morning. That means that when they're sick in their body, they're still going to press their way into worship on Sunday morning. When their friends have turned their backs on them, they're still going to be there on Sunday morning. Give me 12 who have learned how to worship in spirit and in truth. I, I, I don't need a church full of folk who phony on Sunday morning. I, I, I don't need 120 folk who who look churchy. But when they leave out the doors, they're living for the devil. I don't need a church full of devils to dress up on Sunday morning and put on their Sunday best. And, and when they leave out of the church, they run right to the, the bar stool and they, they order everybody set up when they didn't put a dime in Sunday morning offering. I don't need a hundred and twenty. Question has to be raised, Dr. Harris. What were they doing all of these 23 years? Jeremiah was preaching, but nobody was changing. All right. Jeremiah was preaching, but nobody was even trying to to live right. The question must be raised: What were they doing all of this time? Yes, as I hasten to a close, I want to talk to you just three more points and I'm finished. About what Jeremiah must have been feeling as he continued to preach year after year. The first thing that he must have felt 
is that this thing was futile. It was fruitless. It was vain. It was pointless. God, why are you calling me and giving me these messages to preach to these hard-headed folk Sunday after Sunday? It is an act in futility. Nobody's changing. Nobody's trying to live right. Everybody is in immorality and doing their own thing. No matter how much I preach and no matter how much I teach. It just seems, God, that I'm wasting my time. Every time I get here early to make sure the doors are open, I, I get here to make sure that the building is cooled off. I, I get here to make sure that the, the setting is just right. You use me Sunday after Sunday, but, but God, why is it? Yes, sir. Nobody's lives are being changed. Uh -huh. Preacher oftentimes feels like his preaching is in vain. Yes, sir. Doc, I stopped by tonight to let you know that it's not in vain. All right. Jeremiah must have felt that it was a futile effort. Mm -hmm. Secondly, he must have become quite frustrated with the chores and the cares of ministry. Mm. Pastor Harris, I don't have to ask you, you don't have to raise your hand, but I, I, I just got to believe that somewhere along the line these 15 years, You've become frustrated. All right, all right. Jeremiah is a preacher. And yet, the preacher became frustrated. He's there preaching one thing. Preaching what God has given him. Preaching what God has shared with him. Preaching what God has told him to say. And yet, it seems like it's falling on deaf ears. He gets frustrated because there are so many other preachers around him and in the surrounding area and they're drawing the bigger crowds and, 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 and what they're preaching is not this gospel. They want to tell everybody that everything going to be all right. They want to tell everybody that your blessing behind door number three. Just sow a seed and, and everything going to be all right. Keep living the way you're living as long as you sow a seed. Everything going to be all right. Jeremiah is here frustrated because he's preaching one thing, but, but the crowd seem to be gathering over there and over there where they're preaching something totally different. Yes, yes. Ministry can be frustrating. You know that you're surrounded by cookie cutter preachers uh, who on, never on. endeavor to tell the people about their sins. It becomes frustrating when you know that all is being preached and society is about a prosperity gospel. It becomes frustrating when you know that the crowds are gathering over yonder and what they're hearing is simply tickling their itching ears. Bible tells us that the time will come when they will not want to hear sound doctrine, but they will heap to themselves preachers having itching ears. You can go and find somebody who's talking your talk. You can go and find a preacher that ain't going to meddle in your snuff can. You can go and find somebody down and around the corner who's going to let you keep on living the way you want to live and ain't going to touch on your situation. And as long as you keep on tithing, they're not going to risk losing you. But I'm here to tell you this evening that I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you're under Harris's leadership, once again in the third person, I want you to know that the truth of God's word will come forth. I'm not worried about folk walking away from faith.
faithful because when one walks out the door, God will send somebody else I'm not worried about. I'm not sitting down on Friday and, and Saturday night dancing around what I know you're involved in. If God gives me it to preach, baby, it's going to knock on your door come Sunday morning. Because the word is sharper than any two-edged sword. Yes, yes. The word cannot help you unless it first hurts you. It's got to wound you before it can heal you. Yes, it is that Jeremiah becomes frustrated. Jeremiah gets frustrated to a point over the years where he is ready to throw in the towel. Dr. Harris, I don't know about you, but I've been there. Frustration sets in, uh -huh. and in the back of your mind, you, you wonder, is it all worth the struggle? Is it all worth the blood, sweat, and tears? Is it all worth the pain? Is it all worth climbing up the rough side of the mountain? Every now and then, if we're honest with ourselves, not just the preacher, but everyone in here, the back seat of your mind, you ponder, is it all worth it? Is it worth me carrying my Bible into the sanctuary on Sunday morning and reading it throughout the week when I get home when, right. when everybody else ain't even looking at God's word nor trying to live right and it just seems like they're living so much better. Come on. Frustration sets in in Jeremiah's life, and I'm almost finished. Frustration sets in to the point where he ponders throwing in the towel. In fact, one preacher suggests that Jeremiah had already written his resignation letter. Jeremiah, you all remember that he got so frustrated that he... He told God, I'm not going back out to those folk no more. I've become a laughing stock. God, I'm not going back to preach to those folk no more. I'm not going back to that sanctuary no more. I'm not standing behind the sacred desk anymore. I've become a laughing stock. Jeremiah said he wasn't going to preach no more. And then he had to turn around and share that I could not hold it in because it was like fire. Shut up in my bones. It was like fire. Said I wasn't going to preach this thing no more. I said I was not going to share the gospel no more. But it was like fire. Yes. Preacher, you can make up in your mind that you ain't going to talk about Jesus no more all you want. Uh -huh. But if you come to that conclusion, I endeavor to let you know that after a while, if it's on the inside of you, come on, talk. that you won't be able to contain yourself. That's right. That's right. If I ever try to not talk about Jesus or made up in my mind that I would never utter his name ever, ever again there's something on the inside of me that would not let me hold my peace because when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me my soul begins to cry out Is there anybody here tonight that feels like I feel? You get frustrated sometimes and you said you wasn't going to witness on your job no more. But when you sat down at your desk and began to count your blessings and name them one by one, you felt something on the inside. Change he wrote in your life. 
Dr. Harris, you know what it is to press your way with a word from on high Sunday after Sunday. Not only was he feeling that it was futile, not only was he feeling frustrated, but I want you to know that he also remained faithful. You see, anytime you go 23 years and you know folk ain't getting nothing seemingly out of your messages, but yet it's still you keep on moving, you keep on preaching, you keep on working, you keep on praying, you keep on going to the hospital and laying hands upon sick folk. You've been faithful. Jeremiah was faithful all of these 23 years. And even when you feel frustrated and feel like your work is in vain, keep on preaching. Keep on believing. Keep the faith. Because after a while, and by and by, God will bring you through. He will pick you up and turn you around. I'm finished now. Good night, New Mount Carmel. But I want to leave you with this. The songwriter said that if when you give the best of your service, Oh, 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 oh,
night. Amen. 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 I don't remember having this good a time as some of the other places I used to hang out. Right. On Friday night. Amen. 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 Yeah. Don't act like I think I remember some of y'all. Amen. Amen. Oh man, have I enjoyed myself this evening. I tell you, I had a great time. The young people just really touched my my heart. Everybody that uh, uh, thought to uh, bring them uh, to the service, you know, because uh, young people don't come on their own. They don't drive or anything like that. They have to have people to bring them. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I appreciate them. And I appreciate the, our musicians and and uh, how they've served all week and our, our praise team here. All of them that have served in our carnival down uh, through this week. Uh, I really, really want to thank uh, uh, Reverend Harris, amen, for such a powerful, powerful uh, message. Amen. Yes, amen. 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 I tell you, I'm going to get the, get the uh, video. And I'm going to steal some of that stuff. Um, <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. Listen, 15 years ago I came to this church and and I've been here uh, ever since. And, but it hasn't been easy as Pastor Harris uh, 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 alluded to down through the years. When I came here, I, I had come from a church and at that church, I had uh, been ministering on a weekly basis to one of the largest youth ministries that that church had ever seen. And I built that youth ministry and, uh, from five kids to about 60 kids a week on a weekly basis. And then I was called to New Mount Carmel Baptist Church. I came to New Mount Carmel Baptist Church and there wasn't any young people here. Amen. Amen. Um, some folk that were, were hanging on and, and I began to began to pastor here. Amen. Amen. And things progressed and things progressed, but there were problems, you know, there were issues and um, there were um, things that build up over the years, amen, when you have a church of this age. And I got to the point where I wanted to quit. And I uh, walked in the church. And in my mind, and in my spirit, I was had already told myself that the next Sunday was going to be my last Sunday. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not going to be uh, coming in here and serving and arguing and all that kind of stuff. So in essence, I had, I was sad. Amen? But you know what? I'm going to tell you something. Nothing happens in your life because you get sad. Amen? If you want something to happen in your life, you got to get mad. Amen. When you get mad, you kick somebody out the house. You understand what I'm saying? When you get mad, you'll put all that stuff down and walk off that job. Amen. When you get mad, you can you can make something happen in your life. I had decided this was gonna be this was it. I wasn't this wasn't for me. And that particular Sunday, God played a trick on me. We opened the church and we had the service and the service was going on and this woman named Dorothy McBride she came in and she had all these young people with her <laughs> amen? amen some of them are still here 15 years later yeah. amen And I saw those young people, I got mad. I said, this is going to be a church that they can come to and they can enjoy. And I'm still here 15 years later. So, 
I just want to thank all those, those young people, amen, um, that came here and saved my ministry, amen. I appreciate all of you, amen, all of you. Listen, I'm going to let uh, uh, Pastor Harris come back and he's going to dismiss us in his own way. Uh, Faithful, I appreciate you so much, amen. I uh, can't wait to see you again, amen, either here or, or, or over at, uh, at your facility. I really do appreciate all of you. Amen? Amen. 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 Corey, Corey's going to come up and, and, and talk to Pastor Harris. When Corey came in here, he came in with his grandma. He was one of those kids. He must have been about five years old, six years old. Amen? Amen. Now he's getting ready to go into the military and all kinds of stuff. Amen. So after uh, after uh, Corey talks to Pastor Harris, he's going to come back and dismiss us on the way. May God bless you. Heaven smile upon you all. Just keep encouraging your pastor. Amen. God designed it. Amen. He had already, like Jeremiah, probably already written out his letter of resignation. Amen. But when he came through the doors of the church that Sunday, God knew what he needed. Amen. Amen. So just keep encouraging your pastor. Amen. Amen. He comes and he he looks good on Sunday morning and seemingly all is well, but keep praying for him. You, you never know when your pastor is at a breaking point. Amen. You never know when he's ready to come in here and, and just throw it in the tower. Frustration can set in. Amen. Depression, frustration, all of that is real. Amen. I was reading a report, amen, over 15 to 1800 pastors every every single week, man, walking away from ministry, amen, because of frustration, because of difficulty, because of setbacks, amen, keep encouraging your pastor, amen, and God will continue to bless you all, amen, we thank God once again, if all hearts and minds are clear, amen, we're going to ask that we would all stand to our feet, amen, pray our way up out of here. Amen. Amen. So thankful, amen, for all of you on tonight. Loving God, we come in submission to your will and to your way. We come thanking you, Lord, for how you've gone before this preacher and come behind him, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, for how you've been a shield around him over these 15 long years. And Lord, even when it seemed as though words were falling upon deaf ears, you gave him the promise, O oh God, that your word shall not return unto you void. So Lord, we stopped by for a little while just to encourage your preacher man encourage him to keep on preaching because you are in charge of the results even when it looks like nobody's being helped you your word is helping somebody your word is lifting somebody your, your word is strengthening somebody give him what he needs oh god to keep pressing his way 
when it feels like throwing in the towel, I, I pray that you would come around and whisper softly in his ear. Let him know, God, that you are yet with him. Because you with him, everything will be all right. Be with his lovely wife, oh God. Give her what she needs. As they venture forward together, strengthen their union. Bless this entire church, oh God. We thank you for allowing them to remain standing in, in this portion of the vineyard. Help them to continue to be a lighthouse in this world of darkness. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, and abide with us now henceforth and forevermore. Let everybody in the house say, Amen. Amen. Amen.